Kaspa, and today we're making cinnamon rolls. This is perfect for breakfast because who doesn't want a nice and warm cinnamon roll in the morning? This is very easy to make, but it just takes a little time for the dough to rise, but the time is definitely worth it. And this also makes your kitchen smell like cinnamon when you're making it. So let's get started. For the ingredients, there are two parts. For the dough, you will need four cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of whole milk, a quarter cup of warm water, one package of dry yeast, a quarter cup plus one teaspoon of white granulated sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract, a quarter cup of unsalted butter, which should be melted, and one egg. For the filling, you will need a quarter cup of granulated sugar, three quarters cup of brown sugar, a third cup of unsalted butter, which should be softened at room temperature, and one and a half tablespoons of ground cinnamon. First, we're going to make our dough. So we're going to start off by activating our yeast. You will need some warm water here, about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. If it is too cold, the yeast would not activate, but if it is too hot, it will kill off the yeast and that still wouldn't work. So you want to make sure it's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and when you dip your finger in, it should feel just about warm. And today I have this packet yeast, but if you don't have this and you have something like this, it will take about one and a half teaspoons of the yeast. So I'm just going to open the pack and pour it into the warm water. We're going to add a little bit of the sugar to the warm water. This will help the yeast activate way faster. And I'm just going to add in the yeast. And now I'm just going to set this aside for it to activate for about 5 minutes until it is nice and foamy on top. Meanwhile, we're going to work on our dough. So in a stand mixer here, I have a hook attachment. But if you don't have a stand mixer, you could obviously do this by hand in a big bowl with a wooden spoon or your hands. So I'm going to crack in one egg into the bowl. Then I'm going to add the milk. And this has to be whole milk here. The vanilla extract. the butter and this should be melted and finally the sugar and I'm just going to mix it until everything is all combined You want to make sure that the milk is at room temperature because if it's not and if it's cold, then the butter, which is melted, will start to clump up in the mixture. I have mixed together the salt and the flour, so I'm going to set it aside. And as you can see, the uh, yeast is activated. It is nice and foamy on top. So I'm just going to add this into the mixture I had earlier. Once the yeast is mixed in, I'm going to add in half of the dry mix. And I'm just going to mix that in. After most of it is mixed through, I'm just going to scrape down the sides so that the flour is all mixed through. And keep mixing until all the flour is combined. All the flour is mixed through, so I'm going to add in the rest of the dry mix. Once all the flour is in, I'm just going to knead this on low speed for 5 to 10 minutes until it forms a dough and the sides of the bowl is clean. Okay. 
Once the dough is ready, you want to prepare a big bowl. I'm going to add in some oil. You can also use non-stick food spray. And I'm just going to brush it up the sides. Once the dough is kneaded, the sides of the bowl of the mixer should be clean. And I'm just forming it into a ball. And it should be nice and soft. Then I'm going to place it into the greased bowl. I'm going to roll it around a little so that the surface of the dough doesn't dry out while it's rising. And I'm going to cover it with some plastic wrap. Then I'm going to set it aside somewhere warm for it to rise about an hour until it is assembled in size. And the rise time may vary depending on the temperature of where you put it. While the dough is rising, I'm going to be preparing our filling. So here I have my butter and the butter should be nice and soft at room temperature. But if your room temperature is too cold, you could just pop it in the microwave for about 10 seconds until it is nice and soft like this. Because we will be mixing this together with the sugars and you want it to be spreadable. I also have my cinnamon here, both kinds of sugar and a large bowl to mix it in. So first I'm going to add both kinds of the sugar into the large mixing bowl. I will also be adding in the cinnamon. Then I'm going to mix it all together. And now I'm going to be adding in the softened butter. And again, I'm just going to mix it all together. And this process would be a little hard if the butter was not soft. So again, make sure it is nice and spreadable. And you should mix it for it to look kind of like a really thick paste. Hmm. This tastes really good because there's the butter, then there's the sugar and the cinnamon. And once everything is mixed through, that is our filling. The dough has done rising, so now I'm going to prepare the pan. I have a 9 by 13 inch pan here, and I'm just going to be brushing a little bit of oil on the bottom. You could use parchment paper or use um, non-stick cooking spray, but I will be brushing on some oil today. And I'm just going to brush it um, on the bottom and a little bit up the sides. And this is just making sure it doesn't stick. Again, you could use parchment paper or non-stick cooking spray. As you can see, it has definitely doubled in size. It rised for about an hour or so. Dust the work surface with some flour so that it doesn't stick. And I'm going to flip the dough right onto that. Sprinkle the dough with some more flour so that it doesn't stick. And we're just going to press this down into a rectangle. Um, you don't really need to use a rolling pin since this should be nice and soft. to about a little bigger than 9 by 13 inches and I have flattened them to about half an inch thick. So now I'm going to dump all of the filling onto the dough and I'm going to spread it out with an offset spatula but you could also just use a butter knife. Some people like to spread the butter onto the dough and then sprinkle on the sugars but I think doing it this way makes sure that everything is nice and even. You want to spread the filling to about an inch um, away from the edge because when we roll it together, you don't want it to ooze out the sides. Okay. 
Once I have spread the filling all over the dough nice and even, I'm going to be starting to rolling it up. And make sure you roll it up nice and tight starting from the longer side. And you want to make sure the bottom part is nice and sealed. If it's not sticking, you could use a little bit of water. But what I usually like to do is just to roll around and this could seal it as well. Now I'm going to be start cutting it. Um, today I'm going to be making 12 rolls. And to make sure that it's nice and even, first cut it in half. Then I'm going to cut each half into thirds. Then cut each third into half. Now that I have 12 equal pieces, I'm going to start placing them into the greased pan. And you want to leave about half an inch between each one so that it has room to rise. Now that I've placed all of my rolls into the grease pan, I'm going to cover this with some plastic wrap and set it somewhere warm for it to rise the second time until it is doubled in size. I've let my cinnamon rolls rise for about an hour and now it has doubled in size. So now I'm going to place it into the oven preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes. And the bake time may vary depending on the oven. And you could brush some melted butter to the top of the cinnamon rolls to give it a nice and golden brown color. But I'm going to be skipping that step today. My cinnamon rolls has baked in the oven, preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 minutes. It is nice and golden brown on top, and I tested it by inserting a toothpick into the center, and it came out clean, that means it is done. And that's how you make cinnamon rolls. These are very easy to make, it just takes a little bit of time to prepare, but it's definitely worth it. And you could also make yourself a cream cheese icing to drizzle off the top, but I'm not going to do that because of two reasons. The first reason is because if we make that cream cheese icing, we'll have to put it in the fridge. But when I put the cinnamon roll in the fridge, there is butter in the dough itself, so it's going to harden up the whole thing, and that wouldn't taste as nice as it is at room temperature. And the second reason is because there is already a good amount of sugar in this and I think it tastes fine just on its own. So I don't think we need to add more sugar into this. But if you want to make yourself a cream cheese icing, that is up to you. Either way, these are very easy to make, they are very delicious, and they are a perfect little treat for breakfast, afternoon teas, or parties. This whole entire kitchen smells like cinnamon right now, so I really hope you could try this out. So thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye!